Good evening. Welcome to Emmanuel Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Ken, and this evening we're going to continue our Bible study on the book of 1 Samuel. And I want you to get your lesson, get your uh, Bible, get your cup of coffee or glass of water, get your notebook, and open your Bible up to 1 Samuel chapter 14. If you want to see the notes for this lesson, uh, click on the notes tab right below right here and the notes will uh, pop up in a window. So let's get ready, get everything that you need, get your pencil, maybe if you have a question you can email me. Today's lesson, the title is Victory Over the Philistines. Victory Over the Philistines. Now when we left last week, uh, Saul had made uh, a terrible miscalculation and a terrible uh, mistake and the kingdom was taken away from him. However, uh, it was not taken away immediately and one of the things that today's lesson is going to show to us is that we can make mistakes and those mistakes will change the trajectory of our lives but it does not mean we are cast away from the Lord, that he rejects us uh, that we are not his, but that our lives will certainly change. And in today's lesson, Saul has a, a victory. In fact, he has a couple, three victories uh, that show that God has not uh, thrown him away. So let's look at chapter 14. In our lesson this evening, in question number one, in the first three verses, uh, if you have your Bible open, you will see that Jonathan has a great adventure. This adventure is wonderful on several levels. The level that we're looking at in question number one is faith. Uh, we can see that uh, Jonathan is a man of faith, that he has great faith. Uh, and so it happened one day. Uh, there was nothing special about this day. It wasn't his birthday. It wasn't uh, a feast day. Uh, it was just an ordinary day. God put a thought in Jonathan's heart. And, you know, a lot of the things that we do sometimes come because God puts a, a thought in our heart. And we follow that thought, and it's like thought, and it's like a thread. You know, we, we get a thread on something, and we start pulling, <laughs> and uh, then we unravel. Don't pull those kinds of threads. But uh, we, we get a thought, and then we start working on that thought, and then something great can happen as a result of that thought. And sometimes that's the Lord putting something in our heart. Now, that's important in this lesson and in a couple other lessons. It's important because remember when Saul was anointed king, how that the Lord had put a new heart in him, and God gave him a command and said, do that which comes into your heart to do. Do the right thing that comes into your heart. Uh, it's not do whatever you want to and here's a blank check to go do it and do whatever you do I'm going to bless it. No, do the right thing. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, his assistant, he said, let's go to the Philistines garrison and uh, let's see what the Lord may do. Now this was not just a uh, reconnaissance mission. This just this wasn't just a uh, what to spy on them. No, he's got something in mind. Let, let's see what's going to happen. Now, again, Jonathan was proving himself a military leader. He wasn't content to just sit around and watch. There was something in his heart to do. Now, he didn't tell his father uh, where he was going or what he was doing, what he was up to. And no explanation is offered here. Uh, we don't have... Uh, that uh, Saul had given him orders to do this or to do that, or you go spy that out. No, Jonathan just took initiative on, on his own. And, you know, we need people that uh, we have a mission, and we need people that will take initiative to fulfill that mission. And Jonathan proves himself to be one of those people. Now, in question number two, Saul was sitting under a pomegranate tree, okay? Um, now, this expression, sitting under a tree, uh, is, a, is 
used when someone is thinking about doing something. Uh, not that they're doing it, but they're thinking about doing it. Now, you know the two are, the two are worlds apart. Uh, if you remember a few weeks ago, I gave you an illustration of uh, three monkeys on a branch. And the, someone threw some bananas down on the, on the ground. And uh, so the three monkeys are there and they see the bananas on the ground. And one of the monkeys decides that he's going to go down and get those bananas. And so I asked you the question, how many, um, how many monkeys were still left on the branch? And uh, the answer, the right answer, is three. Why? Because you can decide to do something and not do it. And that's what we have here. Saul is sitting and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. Uh, now, Ahijah, son of Ahitub, Ichabod's brother, was with Saul. Now, this is, this is curious that the priest uh, is there at the battlefield. That, now, it's not, it's not strange that a priest would be there, but the, the, the high priest associated with making the big celebrations and making the big decisions, he's there. Uh, we see something developing that ought not to be developing, and we're going to see this throughout the kings of uh, Israel. Here, Ahijah, he wants to be near the king. Now, that's the, that's the uh, religious leader, and we have the political leader. Uh, when one wants to be buddy with the other, uh, there's always going to be a problem. And this does turn out to be a problem, and it will be a problem for hundreds of years uh, to come. Now, uh, Ichabod, remember, was the grandson of Eli, the high priest, and he was named for the glory of be leaving Israel. When, uh, he, when Ichabod was born, uh, his mother saw the cloud of glory that was in the tabernacle, uh, saw it as a, as a cloud that it, it arose and, and departed, and uh, that's what he was named for. Now, perhaps the inclusion of this here in indicates fall. Saul was falling away from the Lord. So the reference here to Ichabod, the glory departing is that Saul is um, he's continuing to walk away from the Lord. Not very far away, but he's still walking away from the Lord. Now, it could be that Saul wanted to hide you around because Samuel has told Saul that uh, his line is not going to continue. And it may be that Saul is thinking, well, if I've got the high priest around me, then certainly God has to be with me. Now, in this, continuing our lesson here, I kind of went on a tangent there. Uh, the people did not know that Jonathan had left the uh, camp. Uh, this meant he was not doing this to make a name for himself. He, he didn't tell everybody, I'm going over there and see what's going to happen. And no, he, he just did it. Now, question number three. Jonathan saw a strategic rock formation on his way to the garrison. Now, this strategic rock formation was, was very narrow, and uh, it could be defended by one person. A couple people could plug that right up. The, sol the soldiers coming either way would not be able to rush through with uh, five or ten. You know, one person is, it was, it, one, it was only wide enough for one person to get through at a time. So anyone coming through, well, it would be one-on-one -on -one fighting. So he sees that, keeps it in his head. He found it because he decided to go check things out. You know, sometimes we find things, we find interesting things, we find great things because we decide to go check things out. Uh, I, I read this week or last week about uh, a girl up in Iceland or Greenland, and uh, she had a metal detector, and she was uh, just checking, looking for some... Uh, things, you know, of interest, and she found this hoard of uh, Viking coins. And, you know, she's a very rich person today. 
She found it because she was looking. Not looking for that, but, you know. Now, Jonathan's faith, look what he said. Maybe the Lord will be with us. You know? Now, he didn't mean that perhaps the Lord was with him one day and then not with him and with him. and No, no, but, but maybe something good will happen. Uh, he said, nothing restrains the Lord. The Lord can do anything. He can, do, he can deliver by many or the Lord can deliver by few. Now, all of these things are very, very true. And Jonathan is talking to his armor bearer and the armor bearer said to him, do all that is in your heart. I am with you. Uh, now, that's what we want to hear when we're taking on a project, right? When we're going to do something and we have uh, either someone that is, uh, uh, they are, they're assistant to us or they're partnering with us. And uh, we like it when people join themselves to do it. And we say, I think we're going to do this. And uh, they don't tear it all apart. They don't criticize us, but they're, they're with us. And this is what his armor bearer, his armor says, go ahead, I'm right with you. Do everything that's in your heart. Now, in question number four, Jonathan proposes a test, and he tells his armor bearer, he says, now, we're going to show ourselves to the soldiers. Now, remember, the armor bearer has just said, do whatever's in your heart. And I wonder if the armor bearer wanted to change his response. We're going to show ourselves. We're going to say, hey, we're right here. And he said, now, if they say, wait, we will wait here in this place. We can defend this place. We, we can, you know, it's very narrow. We, we, it's not going to rush on us. We can, this is a good place right here. Now, on the other hand, if they said, come, we will go up to them, for the Lord has delivered them into our hand. And so he believed that this is what the Lord had for them. Either way, that God was going to help them. And he said, that will be a sign to us. Uh, so those are the only two options there. Now, they showed themselves to the Philistine soldiers. And uh, the soldiers made fun of them. Hey, look, they're coming up to their holes, you know. And uh, the question number five, the soldiers, sure enough, said, come up here, we want to show you something. <laughs> now, they want to show him stuff. Right. You know, I want to show you my shiny sword. I want to show you my shiny spear. I want to show you my arrows. Okay. And so Jonathan says to his armor bearer, the Lord has delivered them to us. Now, as they go up, he climbed up on his hands and knees. That tells you what kind of uh, rock climbing this was. Okay. And uh, the scripture tells us that the soldiers uh, fell before him. It doesn't say that he fought with them. It doesn't say that he, you know, that he was hacking and whacking and prodding with his spear and his sword. No, he's climbing and the soldiers fell in front of him. And it says that his armor bearer went behind him and killed all those soldiers that fell. And that moment... That day, they de defeated 20 men in the garrison. Now, at the same time as this was going on, that Jonathan was climbing up and this little skirmish of, uh, of a battle was happening, the Lord sent a great trembling through the Philistine camp. Now, this was the God of the, the Israelites fighting their battles. This was not new. This reminds us of the Lord of old, who when Joshua led them into the promised land, this is how many of the battles were fought. The army of Israel marched out and God sent thundering and lightning and trembling through their enemies. The earth trembled and quaked. Uh, the Philistines did not know what was happening. And as a result of this, they began to fight with each other. Now, we, this today, if you're just looking at this in the natural, how in the world could these, could someone mistake their fellow soldiers uh, and start 
fighting each other. Well, when the earth quakes, you know, when, when the earth is in that, it's like a, a wave, you know, and it does something to the human body. Uh, you know what it's, uh, well, I'm not sure if you know what it's like when you're on a boat and the boat's going up and then the boat's going down and the boat's going up. Okay, we'll have to stop. But you get it, what it does inside of you. And if you've ever been dizzy uh, at all, to be, to be dizzy, you know, you don't, you, you don't think exactly the way that you should be thinking. And, you know, everything's kind of going in circles. And, yeah, this is what the Lord is doing for them. Now, they began to fight with each other, and a great noise rose from their confusion. Now, the Philistine army began to scatter in the chaos. They were running for their very lives. Saul's watchmen saw what was happening. They didn't know what, or no, didn't know the why, but they knew that something was happening, and they could see the Philistines killing each other, and they could see them running for their very lives. Now, in question number six, Saul also saw the confusion, and he issued a roll call, and he asked, who is missing? Now, this is a really strange way to handle this situation. Saul should have summoned an, an immediate attack in the midst of this confusion. He called for the priest to bring the ark, do something spiritual. Now, Saul's, Saul, he's, he's been around a while, so he knows the story how that uh, not very long ago that uh, Israel did this and they lost the ark. Was this another way for him to look spiritual since he was not, he was not as close to the Lord as he should have been? And so he, he told the, the priest to withdraw his hand. Now, the, the, re, the expression here to withdraw his hand, the priest carried the Urim and Thummim in a pouch. They had the breastplate with the stones in it and the ephod, and there was a pouch in there. And that's where the Urim and Thummim were carried. The priests would take the Urim and Thummim, and we don't know what these were, and they would cast them. And in casting them, they would find out what God wanted them to do, to do something or to not do it, or what direction to go. So it's possible that Saul was looking to, uh, to find out what should we do. Should we attack or should we not attack? Uh, there was no need <clears throat> to ask God if they should fight. The battle was already up and going. He needed to get into the battle. So finally, question number seven, finally Saul took his army into the fight. He ordered the sound of the alarm to charge. Now the Philistines continued to kill each other. <clears throat> there was a great many Hebrews that had been captured by the Philistines, and they joined Saul's army when they saw the confusion that the Philistines were being thrown into. And the rest of the Israelites who were in hiding came out to join Saul. So as the Philistine army was fleeing from the battlefield, the Israelites that were hiding came up and they fought against them. And they continued to defeat the Philistines. So everywhere... On every hand, the Lord was with Jonathan, and the Lord was with Saul and the army of the Lord. Now, in verse number 24, we see Saul's foolish oath and its consequences. Now, Saul's army was fatigued. They were worn out. They had been fighting all day long, and Saul foolishly put them under an oath. That morning, when he saw the battle was going on, he said, Cursed is anyone who eats anything before evening, before I have vengeance on my enemies. Now, it was as if it was Saul's army. It's as if it's Saul's battle. It's as if it's Saul's enemies. And it's not that. This was the Lord's army. 
This was the Lord's battle. These are the Lord's enemies. We always get into trouble when we take things to ourselves and to be ourselves and put an, ourselves as an extension of God. And it's not, doesn't work. we have to be on the Lord's side. God's never on our side. Now, some people have a way of drawing attention to themselves, don't they? They do everything they can to bring the talk or the issue or a situation. They always bring it back to themselves. That's what Saul's doing. Now, these last two points in this uh, question are very important. Saul had no authority to put a curse on anyone. The Lord didn't give him authority to do stuff like that. He also had no authority to proclaim a fast. These two things show the weakness of Saul from the previous chapters when he offered sacrifices, when the king, Saul, started doing priestly things. So Saul had no business putting a curse on anyone, and he had no business proclaiming a fast. Those were priestly things. See, Saul is blurring the lines between his job and that of the priest. Now, in question number nine, Jonathan unknowingly broke the oath. Okay? The army, the army of Israel chased the Philistines through the woods. And as they were going, there was a lot of honey just laying on the ground. So as they're traveling, chasing them through the woods, Jonathan dipped his rod in the honey and he ate some. Now, after he did this, uh, the soldiers that were with him, they told him of his father's oath. And uh, now, Jonathan was, Jonathan was filled with a little bit of righteous indignation. He said, look, look at me. Look how I have regained my strength from a little honey. He said, oh, it, my father has weakened us. We could have had a greater victory. Saul did not have to make such a carnal oath. He did not, that did not mean, what, what he said in the oath, that didn't make them fight harder. It actually weakened them. And uh, sometimes, you know, when we try to act spiritual, we get into trouble just like Saul did. Now, in question number 10, uh, the soldiers sinned because of this foolish oath. Now, when they had chased the enemy uh, and they had some spoils, they, they caught some of the animals from the Philistines, uh, they were so famished, they quickly slaughtered some of the animals and started to eat that night. Uh, they did not properly drain the blood from the animals. And uh, some translations indicate that they may have eaten some of the meat before cooking it. Now, this was a clear violation of the laws that God had given them. And now, now here... Remember what I said about Saul? He kind of, you know, he's kind of fallen away from the Lord, but then at the same time, he he does some things that are proper and right that he should have done. Uh, Saul uh, blamed the people when it was his oath that created this situation, and so he he told them to stop, and he set up a place to properly prepare their food, where the the animals would be slain, the blood would be drawn and then they were to cook it the right way. Now, he also did a good thing by he set up an altar to the Lord. Now, this time, he, he, did, not, he, he did not offer sacrifice. The priests are with him, and so he let the priests do their job. So, remember what I said, that Saul, he, he's doing good and bad? Well, this is a good thing. These are a couple of good things that, that he did. Now, Saul thought to attack the Philistines that night. Now, he's been fighting all day. The people said, do whatever seems good to you. And the priest said, let us draw near to God here. Now, it's 
it's always good for ministers to encourage people to do the right thing, to encourage people to pray and to encourage them to think about the Lord and read their Bible. That's always a good thing. However, sometimes we can sometimes muddy the situation by offering advice that is not being sought right here. They're confusing Saul. Saul already has a marching order from the Lord. Do whatever seems right in your heart. And so attack them at night. You've got them on the run. Duh. Now, Saul took what the priest said to mean that he should ask God if this was a good plan. Now, this is sort of like uh, probably about one of the best ways to explain it. Sometimes kids will ask a mother if they can do something. And they will say, and the mother will say, yes, you can do it. Then for some weird reason, kids will go over and they'll ask their dad, can I do this? And the dad will say, no, you can't do it. And then the kids say, but mom said we could do it. Now, you see what, you see what they did? They already had permission from the mother, and then they had to, they, they, they messed it up by asking, asking Dad. They already had permission. This is sort of what Saul's doing. God has already said, do what's in your heart. And now he's, Lord, do you really want me to do that? Uh, now, in this situation, God did not answer Saul. Now, I think one of the reasons that God didn't answer Saul is, come on, dude. I've already told you, do what's in your heart. If you're thinking about attacking them and keeping up the battle, then duh, it's in your heart. Do what's in your heart. So there was no reason for God to answer Saul. No, no reason for God to say anything. He'd already given him the direction. God had already told Saul what to do was in his heart. And sometimes we can talk and talk and talk and over talk stuff. Sometimes we talk things to death. Now, either say ouch or say amen, because every one of us have been guilty of this. Sometimes we overthink stuff. Now, here, Saul thought that no answer was because of some sin. Remember what I said about overthinking stuff? Uh, sometimes a no answer is really no, okay, you know, uh, Lord, do you want me to do this? And if I don't hear anything, that's sort of a red light. Don't do it until you get a clear indication. Um, now, because he thought there was a sin uh, in this, he stopped. Instead of attacking and keeping the battle going, he regroups his, his army, and he lets the Philistines get further away. And... Uh, so he takes that there's no answer, that there's sin in the camp. And uh, now we do know under the days of Joshua that the Lord let them suffer a defeat because there was sin in the camp and they, cost, they cast uh, lots and it fell to the family of Achan because Achan had sinned. Uh, but that's not this situation. So Saul, he's taking that situation and superimposing it on his situation now, and he swore another oath that the person responsible for this sin was going to die. And uh, so uh, he said, whether it's me or Jonathan, or it's the people, the person that's guilty, they're going to die. Well, they cast Lot, and the lots fell on Jonathan and Saul. And uh, Saul looks at Jonathan, and, and he says, what did you do? Uh, and uh, Jonathan, you know, the truth comes out, what Jonathan did. Now, Jonathan didn't know that there had been this silly oath, and Saul, he, Saul didn't back down from his, he should have fallen on his knees and said, you know, I was just the stupidest person, and uh, let, forget all this whole thing, and let's charge after the enemy. No, instead, he prepares to kill his own son because of his foolishness. Now, at this point, this is where the people said, Enough! Stop! And they stopped Saul from this terrible evil that he 
that he was going to do. Now, as a result of this, the Philistines got away. You know, sometimes when we overthink and overtalk stuff and sit on our thumbs and we just talk and talk and talk, the battle slips away. Well, we need to keep our eye on the ball. Well, that's our lesson for this evening. Thank you for being with us. Let's close in prayer. Father, we are grateful to you today for all of your blessings. We pray, Lord, today that you would continue to keep your hand upon us. We pray, Lord, for those today that are standing in need of whether a healing or in need of a resource today. We pray that you would be with them, give them the answer that they are seeking from you today. I pray you watch over your people and keep them close to you, we pray. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We hope to see you real soon.